Good morning, everyone. It's great to be in Orlando. I, I, when I left Houston uh, yesterday afternoon, it was 41 degrees. I think when we landed here, it was 84. So it was a great change to, uh, to, you know, for a change of weather. It's been pretty cold this winter in, in Houston. Um, as Harry mentioned, I, I, I lead a, a global engineering organization. And, and within our organization, we've really been emphasizing uh, and trying to encourage innovation as a, as a primary behavior. I'm going to talk about the uh, open process automation um, update for ExxonMobil, but I thought I would start with um, a slide here from Steve Jobs. Uh, and it talks here about innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. He mentioned several times this morning using your phone for different activities. You know, Steve Jobs, I think, is probably one of the greatest innovators of my time. Um, and now you think about it, a little bit over 10 and a half years ago, he introduced the iPhone, which was essentially a, a telephone with a, a data platform attached to it. It's very interesting because I wonder if Steve would have thought 10 and a half years later that that platform would actually lead to several multi-billion dollar businesses based on it. A bunch of you probably use the, the taxi app. I won't call the name. I don't want to advertise our company. But, but you use it based on location and services to get here you know, for this conference, a multi-billion dollar business. And a couple weeks ago, I was actually um, downloading my, uh, my banking app. And it said, well, do you want to turn on location services so we, you can link your credit card to the location services to prevent fraud? And I wonder if Steve would have thought about his platform allowing banks to really manage security you know, throughout that time. And I think the key, key message for me as a result of thinking about innovation and what it does, a lot of us in this room today are both technical people and business people. And the message is you never know where innovation is going to take you. And really, there are multiple business opportunities that I think that have sprung from the iPhone platform that we all use today. <clears throat> now let me shift this morning, and I want to provide an update on the open process automation industry initiative uh, that we shared a couple years ago. And I want to talk more about ExxonMobil's plans and our next step, and most importantly, our commitment to open process automation. <clears throat> Two years ago, at this conference, we announced a contract with Lockheed Martin you know, for the systems integration of a proof of concept solution to the business problem of control system replacements. As you can see on the slide, our vision is a standards-based, open, interoperable, and secure automation architecture that's commercially available to everyone, not just for ExxonMobil only. And we would like to have a technically ready system for on-process use by 2021. At last year's ARC forum, we provided an update on the proof of concept project and showcased the newly created industry standards organization the Open Process Automation Forum of the uh, Open Group. This year, it's my pleasure to announce ExxonMobil's next step, the third track of this activity, which is a collaborative uh, development and field trials with other operating companies. <clears throat> You've heard uh, Don Bartusiak and Steve Bittar in my organization. I call them the innovators, and they've outlined the work that we have planned for the collaborative engineering and parallel field trials of the next development stage of open process automation. These trials will occur simultaneously with other operating companies. So with this overview, let me give you an update on each one of the three tracks and where we are at this point in our, in our journey. So the first track is the Lockheed Martin OPA proof of concept. Lockheed Martin issued a request for proposal back in December of 2016 to the 82 suppliers and system integrators. About a year ago, when the uh, request for proposals were due, we received 46 RFP responses. In June, we selected 10 of those proposals for inclusion in the proof of concepts. And the selections were based primarily on the open interoperability quality attribute from those proposals. The companies selected are on the chart on the right, 
And again, I, I want to thank uh, those companies for participating. This proof of concept is being built at Lockheed Martin's facility in Owega, New York. And it became operational in September of last year with a high fidelity dynamic simulation as the process. We'll provide an update on the status and results to date in Dave DeBarry's talk in the afternoon session. Dave, are you here this morning? Perfect. So I encourage you to attend uh, Dave's session uh, this afternoon. Now let me move to the second track, which is the uh, Open Process Automation Forum Group, uh, Forum of the Open Group. At this time last year, we reported 32 companies that were members of the forum, including nine end user companies. Today, we've basically doubled that to 75 companies that are part that are organizational members and 17 end user companies. Including in that listing as well are six of the seven DCS vendors. And the companies are, are listed in this chart, relatively small print, but hopefully you can get a sense of, of who is participating. Now speaking of the Open Process Automation Forum, the forum published its first deliverable, the business guide, four weeks ago. They're also working very hard to publish the first preliminary snapshot of the technical standards, which will be available in the second quarter of this year. There will be also be a session about the Open Process Automation Forum on Thursday morning, and I encourage you to attend. And the, open, the OPA Forum members will also meet for their subcommittee working session Thursday afternoon and Friday of this week. Now let me talk about the exciting piece, which is a collaborative development and parallel field trials. <clears throat> this year's news is that we are going to partner with several end user companies who are members of the Open Process Forum, and they will collaborate in the development and parallel field trials of OPA conformance systems. Today, I am pleased to announce that we have four letters of intent that were signed with the following companies uh, to participate in this collaboration effort. Prax Air, Coke Industries, Georgia Pacific Affiliate, and Dow. Furthermore, we're actively working with four additional companies to complete their letter of intent to participate in this effort as well. Looking at the left-hand side of this chart, you can see the, uh, the outline for the collaborative development and parallel field trials that we plan. The first step is a collaborative front-end engineering to specify a prototypical OPA standards conformant system. The collaboration is among the operating company partners and Lockheed Martin as a systems integrator, and will kick off this work uh, in April. The second step involves multiple parallel projects by each operating company to engineer and implement systems on processes of their choice with system integrators of their choice, which is also very important. Non-competitive information regarding each system will be shared amongst the projects. We, ExxonMobil, have selected a facility for our first unprocessed prototype within this collaborative development framework. And we expect to, be, to begin procurement later this year for components on the first unprocessed prototype. Now you could say, why is this important to ExxonMobil? I just want to reinforce why we think the open process automation is very valuable to our company. As you've heard my R&D team say many times, we're actually seeking a fundamental transformative solution to our process automation needs. And let me share one example of the capability we want to, to run across our businesses. Today, my organization supports 38 chemical plants and refineries worldwide, and ExxonMobil supports multiple producing facilities worldwide. So in addition to what we currently do with distributed control systems, we want to be, to be able to manage the fleets looking horizontally across this chart on the left, or our technology platforms coming vertically across our global asset base using our data-driven methods. 
Now, I recognize that ExxonMobil, because of its size and scale, can probably generate a lot more value looking at our fleets and our platforms. But I suspect many of you have similar opportunities when you consider the amount of equipment that's associated with those fleets and platforms. We need and want to innovate our operations technology and our information technology systems. And we also need to improve our work processes. Open process automation addresses our business problems with control systems replacement, and it is a vital part of our strategy for redesigning our manufacturing support processes via digital technologies. You know, at our facilities, we generate about 1.3 billion data records from 5 million tags each day. And that doesn't include machinery data. If you do that, then it probably goes up by an order of magnitude. Access to this data and the ability to process the data into actionable information are critical needs for our business. The data we need are more diverse than what is being collected with today's process historian. And we must be able to implement control optimization and data analytics applications much, much more easily than we can today, distributed from edge to private or public cloud platforms. Let's shift a bit and talk about the benefits of open process automation. We know that ExxonMobil alone cannot transform this industry based on open process automation. It will take a critical mass of end user demand, and it will also take the collaborative efforts of end users, control system vendors, hardware suppliers, software suppliers, and system integrators to specify the open process automation technical standards and transformed business system. So what's in it for us? And what's in it for you? For ExxonMobil, we have a once in a generation opportunity to make a step change improvement in our, in our process automation system. The vision for a standards based, open, interoperable, secure automation architecture addresses both the technical and commercial root causes of the problem we're trying to solve. Other end users have shared the same opportunity and the same needs and wants as we have perhaps not as urgently as ExxonMobil, but every bit as real. Now is the time to share your vision and needs for improved automation systems by your active participation in the open process automation. Software suppliers, hardware suppliers, and system integrators will have expanded market opportunities to sell conformant components and systems directly to end users. And you have the you have the opportunity to take your place in what we expect to be a more efficient marketplace. The imperative for all stakeholders in the industrial controls ecosystem, customers and suppliers, is to thrive by increasing productivity and customer satisfaction. Considering the history of the industrial control systems, we understand why we have closed proprietary layers in our automation and enterprise systems today. And th those industrial control systems have served us well up until now. Now, however, we believe that our path to increase productivity is to replace, not work around, the closed proprietary layer with an open, interoperable, secure one. And we're calling on all vendors to contribute to this transition. The future is going to be more like the industrial Internet of Things and the cyber physical systems of Industry 4.0. It will look a lot less like the hardware defined automation architecture of the 1980s. And we expect the opportunities are in software and services, not purpose built hardware and proprietary communications. And we believe that digital transformation is a requirement for survival in today's business. I don't know about you, but in my world today, hardly a day goes by where I don't talk about the internet, the cloud, robotics, sensors, machine learning, AI. Those are things that happen a lot in my day-to-day day -to -day activity today. 
And we believe that transforming from a closed proprietary system to a standards-based, open, interoperable, and secure one is the key to digital transformation. Other industries have made the transformation, and so can we. So to conclude, you know, ExxonMobil is committed to achieving the goals of open process automation. We will share the learnings from our Lockheed Martin proof of concept later today. And we'll also continue to contribute significant resources to the work of the Open Process Automation Forum. If you think about our industry today in the oil business, it's very hard to fight for R&D dollars or R&D resources. And we've been able to compete very effectively within our company to support open process automation. And we'll continue to do that based on the value that we see in it. And we'll continue to, to champion the collaborative development and parallel field trials with other operating companies along the way. Again, the last word uh, from my message is no different than what it was last year when we presented at this forum, which is we, we would really need to have active participation of all, and I emphasize all stakeholders, in the standards work of the Open Automation, Process Automation Forum. And in particular, we would like to have a lot more end user input. So I encourage your companies to join. And finally, you know, I started my comments this morning with this slide and quote from Steve Jobs, talking about innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. And you've seen what has happened to the platform that Steve launched that was very innovative. The question for OPA is, in 10 years, where will you be? Thanks and appreciate it.